Thanks for joining me in my kitchen for a little bit different video than I typically make. But before we get started, don't forget, there's James the Bike Guy merch below. Uh, this is uh, this is actually a really nice sweatshirt. Not gonna lie, I like it. But in this, uh, this new video, uh, I wanna take you guys through what it takes me to buy a bike. Uh, as you guys have seen with this quarantine stuff going on, all that kind of thing right now, um, you know, some of the videos have changed and what I've started to do is I've started to do videos of my own personal bikes. And it seems that, uh, that several of you like it and I thought it might be an opportunity to sort of change the channel a little bit and do a bike together. So I want to go through and show you basically what it takes and what I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, let's check out what the new bike's going to be. So as you can see here, you know, channel, it's growing, which is awesome and I'm super psyched. Uh, but I've actually got a playlist of all my, uh, my past bikes. So if you guys want to see them, you're totally able to. You can go on, you can see some of the different ones. Some of these bikes I'm posting up, I, I actually don't own anymore. Uh, I have this terrible habit of going through a bunch of different bikes. Uh, but, you know, there's worse things, uh, worse things to do, I suppose. But with this new bike, uh, what I want to be able to do is get a hardtail mountain bike that we can, you know, ride, do some upgrades together, figure that stuff out. So what I first thought of was the Trek Roscoe, because let's be serious, the Roscoe is a really nice bike. Uh, it's one that, uh, that I like. You know, I think it offers a bunch of performance uh, for the price point and that sort of thing. I mean, there's several different models of the Roscoe. Uh, and the Roscoe 8 sort of jumps out at me, but about two years ago, a lot of YouTubers started to do the Roscoe 8, uh, basically because it was the best option at the time. And in fact, it's still a really good option, but uh, I was thinking something a little bit different. So I've put up a video on the Fuse 27.5, now, uh, this particular bike, I really, really liked. So I went through, you know, this is a bike that's $1,250, at least where I am. And I thought that this is like huge value for the money. You know, uh, to me, it's a really cool bike. And so initially I went there. But if you guys are anything like me, one of the things that I run into is, well, how do I decide when enough is enough. Does that make sense? So so uh, to be more clear, what I'm going at is that Fuse in a 27.5 uh, at 1250 is a really nice bike. But the geek in me goes, well, you know, this fork, I'd really want to change. I don't totally love the fact that it's got a square taper bottom bracket. Uh, I mean, does it really mean anything? I, I don't know. I mean, for this bike, it's not going to be my main bike, but it's still going to be fun. So, you know, I start looking at this stuff and I go, well, what if I go one step up? I mean, that's that's not a big deal, right? So I go to the Fuse Comp. Fuse Comp is only $1,650. Oh, shoot. Battery's about to run out, so we got to get this done soon. But only $1,675. But this bike offers a bunch of advantages. So I actually kind of like the, the Dove Gray, so we'll look at that. But here, we've got a RockShock Recon fork, which is theoretically a little bit of an upgrade. It's definitely a stiffer fork, still steel stanchions. So again, the bike nerd in me goes, nah, I don't know. I might want to upgrade that. Then this goes to 12 speed. It goes to the XS, excuse me, the SX group set. Uh, I always get that mixed up. If you flip the crank, that actually says X5, which is where that came from. And if you go way back in mountain bike days, uh, that makes a lot of sense. But anyways, so SX group set, which is 12 speed. Um, I really like it. I know some people on the internet seem to seem to think that there's some durability issues, but I know a bunch of people with it and that doesn't concern me. Uh, this also gets the sliding rear dropout, uh, which is really neat. So you've got this sliding rear dropout uh, and that's basically going to allow me uh, to adjust the, the frame geometry just a little bit. It's got the 29 inch wheels with 2.6 tires, which that's a super healthy tire size. And then this guy, uh, it actually goes up to the 34.9 
dropper seat post. So obviously that's the right choice, right? Well, let's look again, but first I'm gonna charge the battery. So with the battery plugged back in, we get to be a little bit crazier once again. So if you go back to that fuse, now there's a fuse expert for 2150. Now this is actually getting to some real money for a bike. I mean, not, not that these are cheap anyways, but we're over 2000, we're into full suspension price point. I mean, I just recently did that video on the Fuel EX5. Uh, you can get that bike for the same money. And that Fuel EX5 is a damn nice bike. So with that being said, it's like, so again, at what point is this too much? But you go here and you go, well, so this particular bike is gonna have an NX drivetrain, which I've owned NX before, the NX Eagle. Uh, super reliable, it works really well. Um, it's got the same range as the SX, but NX is a little bit nicer, a little nicer cassette, a little less plastic. The really big thing though, the crank set, it goes to a dub crank set, which means, uh, you know, it's got outboard bearings. Uh, again, to me, that's a pretty big upgrade. Um, you know, on the other bikes, I would definitely replace the crank, uh, may maybe even before a ride it. I don't know. Uh, you've got nicer wheels, which we'll get into that for a second, but are they really that much better? And then got the 34.9 dropper, which is nice. But the real trick is this bike comes with a RockShox 35. So the 35 is basically a revelation just with a motion control damper from a few years ago. Uh, I had a revelation on one of my Santa Cruz's recently, uh, a couple years ago, my high tower. And uh, personally, it was awesome. I came off of a bike uh, that had a Rhythm 34, and the revelation to me was way nicer. I really liked it. And the 35 is basically the same thing, except for with a motion control damper. And the motion control damper does make a difference, uh, you know, compared to, say, like a charger damper or something like that. Uh, but it's perfectly serviceable. And to me, that fork means, you know, I don't really need to change it. So if we really want to compare these bikes and be sure about what we want to do, uh, this is where a lot of times I go to 99 Spokes. So 99 Spokes is a website that allows you to look up bikes and compare them. So uh, it does everything from geometries to part spec, stuff like that. You know, because I'm looking at, uh, at the same lineup of bike, the geometry really doesn't change. I know I'm going to need a medium. It's, that part doesn't matter to me. So see, there's a problem with the way that I choose bikes, and it's mostly that I just overthink it. And I was on a roll yesterday, but I decided to cut myself out on the video that I'm showing you because, well, today I woke up with a different thought. I had a hard time feeling the right balance between what I wanted out of the bike and sort of the, uh, the cost and the overall fun that I'd get from that bike. And when choosing a bike, the most important part is, is if you're going to spend more, you need to get more fun. And as long as the fun matches the spend, then it makes perfect sense, right? Well, actually, as I was thinking about it, I just said that uh, one of the nicer bikes that I took a look at that I thought was really awesome was the Trek Fuel EX5. It's got a new frame for this year. The aluminum frame is pretty nice. The geometry is really nice on that bike. And so I started to think if I'm possibly thinking about that fuse expert, which is getting into full suspension money, shouldn't I be looking at a full suspension? Because if, uh, if I'm honest, if you're going to be at that level, uh, I've done this before where I've bought a really nice hardtail and then I find myself just riding the full suspension and, and not using the hardtail as much. Hardtails are a great place to start, but... Uh, but you sort of get used to a full suspension and you like the performance out of it. So of course, it's time to look at that fuel. Let's take a look. Let's go through, let's check out the mountain. Cause, uh, well, I think I'm onto something here. Mountain, I think it's gonna be way down on the list. Got super cows, rails, and electric mountain bike would be fun. Go through. 
And as I was looking around, I thought, well, this Trek Fuel EX7 uh, really hits the mark. 130 millimeters of rear travel, 140 up front. It has that uh, that RockShock 35, which is a pretty nice fork for the money. Uh, and the really killer thing about this particular bike is actually going to be the wheel set that comes with it. It's, uh, it's going to be one of these bikes that the wheel set, you really don't need to change. Out of the box, it's going to have a really nice setup. And uh, so what do you think of this? So let's jump over to 99 spokes. I'll show you how it works. And now we are going to talk about geometry because that's a bit different than before. But so if we go here, we do Trek Fuel EX7. Let's find this bike, 2020 right there. Go ahead and check that. And then now with 99 spokes, you can just hit compare and we can start to go through. So let's get this out of the way. I mean, the, if I was looking at a hardtail still and I haven't, I haven't made the decision, I haven't bought one yet, is would I be at a Roscoe 8, which has really good value for the money, a Fuse Comp, which definitely has a nicer frame, a little bit nicer geometry, arguably, or the Fuel EX7, which is a really nice mix of everything. So let's go through here. So as, as we take a look at it and see price points, uh, now we're talking a pretty big price delta, but if we take a look, there's not a whole lot of weight delta. So you know, if you if you go from that Roscoe 8, which has a weight, just 32.1 pounds, the Fuse Comp, uh, which I do have a video coming up on that, so I'm not going to spoil it, but it's in this area, or the Fuel EX7 at 33 pounds, you know, we're doing all right. You see RockShock 35 on the Roscoe 8, the RockShock Recon, uh, which is definitely a more basic fork, RockShock 35 on the Fuel EX7. Let's go through here, aluminum, hydro disc. And now you're also seeing that the, the Fuel EX7 is about the same part spec as the Roscoe 8. So it's NX Eagle. So it's kind of got to jump right there too. Now if we keep going down, you can of course see suspension, uh, all that kind of stuff. They all have the dropper post. Although I do like the dropper post that's on that Fuse Comp. That's got the Trans X, which is pretty nice. Uh, but we start to go through, and you'll see that this uh, this particular bike um, is going to be a really big difference in geometry uh, from the Roscoe to the Fuse to the Fuel. So, in fact, as, as we take a look at that, you're going to see that there's going to be quite a bit different in geometry. So, as we take a look at it, this is giving us a little bit of an overlay of how the geometry differs. Uh, we've got our Roscoe here, our Fuse, and then our Fuel. And if we take a look at this, we'll first look at stack. So actually, I should step back and say stack and reach are the two uh, measurements that really matter to me as a rider. Uh, reach is going to be how much room I have in the cockpit of the bike, and stack is basically how tall the front end is. So stack measures from your bottom bracket height to where the, uh, the top race uh, of the headset is and basically that allows you to know exactly how much elevation is inside of that frame and then reach is from that same bottom bracket position forward and that's going to allow you to know how much room you have in the cockpit now it does lose out on the measurement like the seat tube angle so that can uh, adjust the position just a little bit and in fact some bikes with a really long reach We'll also have a steeper seat tube angle, so the top tube length is actually uh, not that much different. But now we're, we're starting to get a little geeky here. But basically, as we look through, the stack of the bikes uh, varies quite a bit. The Trek Fuel is going to be our shortest at 609 millimeters, and the Fuse is going to be the tallest at 625. That means you're going to bend over less on the Fuse and more on the Fuel, and the Roscoe is somewhere in between. And then in Reach, this is where we have a big spread, and this actually shows uh, sort of the big difference between a Roscoe and a Fuse. The, the Fuse comp and above definitely has a more aggressive frame, and you can see it here in the 440 uh, millimeter reach. That's a pretty long reach for this type of bike, and uh, compared to the Roscoe, 
I mean, you're now talking a, a pretty big difference. That's got a 410 millimeter reach, so much shorter in this particular uh, uh, angle. And then the fuel is at 460. But where that's going to come into play is actually going to be uh, when we take a look at seat tube and top tube angles. So the seat tube angle on the Roscoe is 70.8, so that's pretty slack. Um, that means that you know it's a pretty recreational position and, and it's good for confidence for a new rider, but it's not going to be the best for climbing. Uh, the fuse, it's got a 74 degree seat tube angle, so it's steepened up a little bit. Uh, and that is actually going to be part of the reason uh, that it's going to have such a elongated um, reach to it is they have to bring the front end of the bike out to give you that same room in the cockpit. And then the fuel's got the steepest seat tube angle at 75.5. And that's actually a, a pretty modern trail geometry uh, seat tube angle, a steep seat tube angle, definitely going to help with climbing. And that's where we're going to see uh, the top tube links are going to vary a little bit. So believe it or not, uh, our longest bike is still going to be the Fuse, and that's because it's got a 619 uh, millimeter top tube length, uh, followed up with the Fuel 618, so that's actually going to be a little bit smaller cockpit uh, than the Fuse, uh, considering the seat tube angle. And then the last thing there is going to be our top tube length of the Roscoe is going to be really long uh, at 625, and the reason for that is because it's got uh, such a short reach but a really slack seat tube angle and so that means it's going to be more stable which is why a beginner rider might choose that over the the higher level fuse um, but it's definitely going to make the bike a little less playful so i'm pretty sure i've convinced myself out of the roscoe but as we uh we keep going down the rest of this stuff i don't think matters too much high level piece uh basically that fuel, it's got the SRAM NX, which is going to be a good group set. Although, part of me thinks maybe for the channel we should change it out to uh, to be some Shimano SLX. That might be fun. Let me know if you'd like that down below. And then, as we look at it, this is the place where the fuel actually shorts out compared to all the other bikes. So, the fuel's got the MT-401-400 setup versus on the Roscoe, it's got the 501. And where that actually matters is the Roscoe is going to have a much nicer lever. Uh, it's a pretty big difference, actually. And then, of course, the Fuse Comp has the SRAM level brakes, which are okay. Um, but I think on this type of bike, I'd rather go with the brakes that are on the Roscoe 8, if given the option. Go through, they all have decent aluminum frames, nothing big to talk about. Uh, the Fuel gets the 44 millimeter offset on the RockShock uh, 35 gold, which is a very nice fork to have, a uh, pretty good place to start. It does get a dub bottom bracket, which uh, that to me is big news. That's going to be a, a real crank set on this bike, which is great. Nothing I have to worry about there. And then uh, cockpit stuff is all fine. It's, uh, it might be something to upgrade through time. But the thing that I really like about this bike is those Bontrager Line Comp 30s. So the Comp 30 comes with a 54 tooth engagement hub. It can actually be upgraded to 108. I've got a, a, a annotation, I think, right about there uh, where you'll be able to see how to convert that. But that means you can get some really you know, high level uh, performing hubs on a stock wheel set. Plus they're actually not too heavy. So that's a nice thing to see. Get the uh, 29 by 2.6, a nice fat tire, just like on that, uh, that Fuse big beefy 29er tire and then some Shimano rotors. So between this, I think there's some argument to say that that Fuel EX7 is probably going to be worth spending over the Fuse Comp. Well, anyways, go ahead and let me know your thoughts uh, down in the comment section below. Uh, by the time I post this video, a bike will be on order. Uh, if you were given the opportunity, would uh, would you jump up from the Fuse Comp at sixteen seventy five to the Fuel EX seven at twenty eight ninety nine, or would you split it in the middle, with either the Fuel EX five or the Fuse Expert? Go ahead and let me know it down in the comment section below. Can't wait to have this bike, upgrade it, and go over all the neat things that we can do with it. And don't forget, check out James the Bike Guy merch in that shopping shelf just below the video.